right? So with this, he says the main objective for his brain trust to figure out is he wants relief for the needy, recovery for the economy, and reform to make sure it never happens again. So he's going to pass something called alphabet agencies. Now I told you in the first 100 days is when he did all of this. In fact, sometimes literally presidencies are judged, even Obama's or President Bush's, baby Bush or Clinton or daddy Bush or anybody like that, Ronald Reagan, on what can you do in the first 100 days. That's how important FDR's was. Now here's the first one. This first law he really majorly passes. Pause it, get it down. Okay, so the pro provision of this act, remember, everything's revolving around your three R's. Relief, recovery, or reform. This one is a, what does it say? Relief. Ease the suffering of the needy. F-E-R-A, 1933. Federal Emergency Relief Act. But that's kind of a long way. To, Federal Emergency Relief Act. So he says, here's what you're going to do. I'm going to pass so many of these. We're going to call them alphabet agencies. F-E-R-A. It's a lot easier to say than Federal Emergency Relief Act. So with that, he's going to pass so many of these that these become the known as the alphabet agencies. The first thing the FERA does, distributed $500 million in what kind of aid? Direct aid to the unemployed, such as food, clothing, grants. Here's one of the things that FDR also understands. For people to believe we can get out of the depression, he has to give them something to look forward to. So he starts bread lines. He starts... Things like, you know, we have Salvation Army, that kind of stuff like this in today's day and age. But he said, the government is going to help you. We're going to be there for you. And remember, he was telling all of these people all this stuff every single week over the radio in his fireside chats. Now, that was one, F-E-R-A. The next one I want you to look at, oh, I love this one, W-P-A, 1933 to 1943. A long time for this to be in action. I'm going to be honest with you. The WPA was kind of already in action. It is a relief agency as well because it gives out. It's called the Works Progress Administration. It gives out. If it says work, what do you mean? Out beside the slide, I want you to write three, maybe four letters, J-O-B-S, jobs, 8.5 million to be exact. Employed 8.5 million workers in construction jobs. But here's the funny thing. I love the WPA because it also provided work in the arts, theater, and literary projects. Here's the funny thing about this program. They didn't just give you a job building something. They literally said, I don't care how I'm going to employ you. I'm going to employ you. So what I'm going to do is, and I kind of kind of got a couple interesting pictures here. The WPA, Works Progress Administration. Here is this guy. It has a job. He is painting the people who are putting in the sidewalk, which also have jobs. These guys are putting in new sewer line. They have jobs. Now, here's what you have to understand. These guys have jobs. These guys have jobs. You go back to this, all these guys have jobs. Every single one of these 8.5 million workers that now have jobs, and they do so many different things, they are employed by the WPA they build 2,500 hospitals, 5,900 schools, 13,000 playgrounds, and 125,000 public buildings around the country. Do you know how much money that's pumping into the economy? I give you a job. Every Friday, you get a paycheck. On Saturday, what do you do with that paycheck? You spend it. Then you spend it at the grocery store. Then that person at the grocery store takes in, gets that money in, pays his grocer. The person that's checking them out or the person who's stocking the shelves, they get a paycheck and what do they do? They spend it. Every time you give jobs, it creates more jobs. And so with that, FDR says, I don't care what you're doing, whether you're painting, you're laying sidewalk, you're writing a book, you're singing a song, I'll pay you if you do work. That way I can get my economy going. I'll build all this stuff. The funny thing about this, WPA, um, I don't know if y'all have ever been to, um, uh, uh, oh my goodness, Powder Oak State Park. That um, uh, road going down into Paladero State Park, built by the WPA, um, the brick roads downtown, the red brick roads, put in by the WPA, um, all the buildings in these itty bitty towns like Dumas and, you know, uh, Abernathy and, you know, all these little itty bitty towns, the, a lot of the public buildings look exactly the same, do they not? Like when you're driving through them, you can't, can't tell which the different ones are. Literally, all of those public buildings built by the WPA by the same plans, architectural plans, because the plans, it didn't matter what plans they were. It's just that they wanted them built so they could give people jobs. My favorite part about this, highlight the playgrounds. 
The rest of them are really important, but the interesting one to me, this is what tells me what FDR is after. He says, build thousands of playgrounds. Because in the middle of a depression, you need to be happy. And how do you make parents happy? You make the kids happy. Kind of interesting. Now, TVA, go ahead and get this down. Pause it. Get it down. Okay, let's talk about this. This right here, this propaganda poster for the TVA, Tennessee Valley Authority. So obviously it's going to be a regional project, Tennessee. Out beside the slide, put regional. Literally, you have a hand holding what here? A lightning bolt. Here's what it did. Stimulates the economy, produces cheap electricity by building a series of circle dams. Controls flooding, plants new forests, brings this century into the 21st century. But remember, dams with the new technology that's evolving generates electricity. When Tennessee now has access to cheap electricity, do you think businesses want to build there? Of course they do. Then when businesses build there, they give out jobs. When jobs are there, then it brings it into the 20th century. you got to realize that Tennessee back then, you know that people talk about Tennessee with their teeth and, you know, the little straw coming out of their mouth. Like, Tennessee's like where your, you know, mother's your sister kind of situation. That kind of, uh-oh, you know, down south stuff. With that, here's the deal. Tennessee, actually, back then, 94% of property owners and 98% of tenants did not have electricity. So FDR says, let's put the TVA, let's develop this, let's get them series of dams, get cheap electricity. 30% of properties and 41% of properties back then had no toilet facilities. Let's build this series up. He said, let's make this part of the country better so more people will move there and more businesses will move there as well. Here's a really good practice question on the TVA. You might see it again. Now, with that, reform, prevent another depression. FDIC, gosh, massive star out beside this slide before I even go any further. Massive star. One of the most important. If I'm going to pick three alphabet agencies that are important, this is one of them. Massively important. FDIC in 1933. FDIC stands for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Now, get this slide down. Now, let's talk about it. What do you deposit? You deposit money. Put a money sign out beneath here. Now, here's what happens. During the Great Depression, all of those banks had closed and nobody, nobody trusted the banks. Remember that cartoon of that guy sitting on the bench and the little squirrel asked him, but why didn't you save when times were good? And he said, what? I did. It's just the bank closed. Now I don't trust banks. Here's a story that will absolutely blow your mind. Before the FDIC comes into it, um, uh, there was um, many, many people who were not trusting banks. So a lot of the times, the safest place for them to keep their savings was in their mattress. You will hear thousands upon thousands of stories about people in the Great Depression and afterwards who did not use banks because they did not trust them. And who would after those run on the bank pictures, right? So with that, it was about, oh, 2006 or seven. There was a story in the newspaper, I remember it. I was in my like, second year of college, and I was researching, and I came across this story. And up in Chicago, there was this little grandma and grandpa, and their house had burned down. And she was beside herself, absolutely beside herself. She must have been like 85 years old or something like that. They got out safely, thank God. But she was beside herself. And one of the reporters covering the fire said, Ma'am, why, you know, it's okay. They were trying to console her. You know, you know that's why you have insurance. It, it can be replaced. It can be replaced. And she looked at the reporter and she said, my entire life savings was in that house. And the lady was like, what? She said, the money, the money's in the mattress. Over $150,000 was in their mattress and it burned up with the house because nobody trusted banks. And a lot of people from the Great Depression, they, they do not think the same way we do, guys. They save everything. You know, grandma and grandpa save everything. My parents save everything. Plastic bags, everything, okay? With this, that mentality develops. This agency might be the single best agency they came up with because it is still around today. Now, here's what it says. Created federally insured bank deposits. Underline insured bank deposits. The first limit was 2500 per investor at first per, to prevent bank failures. Basically, what this agency does is it says, if this bank is insured by the FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, however much money you put into it back then, up to $2,500, is guaranteed to you by the federal government. 
federal deposit insurance. So with that, if you have $2,000 in it, the bank closes, do you get your $2,000 back? Yes, because the government insures it to you. Now, that was back then in 1933. Ever seen this picture right here? This is literally the current FDIC sticker. Each depositor is insured at least what? $250,000. You have no idea how amazing it is to feel like, oh, I have, I've worked really hard for myself. I have a certain amount in savings. Let's say I had $25,000 in savings. If that bank closed during the Great Depression or before the Great Depression, my money goes up in smoke. But now the government, backed with full faith and credit of the United States government, says you can have this. So now I'll put my money into the bank. Do I trust the bank? Yes. Now can the bank loan it out? Yes. Now are we going to start making money out of it? Yes. And does money start getting into your economy again? Of course. One of the most important. And you'll notice right here, it says not relief, but what? Reform. To change, to make it what? Better. Next time you go to the bank to deposit money, look for it. I guarantee you you're depositing somewhere where it's FDIC insured. Next one up. Pause it, get it down. Now put a massive star by this one. Again, one of the top three agencies. Okay, this is the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission. This is going to regulate the stock market and restrict margin buying. Remember, what is a margin? Circle, circle, circle. It's buying on credit. So this right here, Securities and Exchange Commission, its job is to reform as well. If they put regulations, whether it's a regulation, out beside it, right, rule, I want you to do it, I'm checking for it. It puts rules on the stock market, which says you can't put $1,000 down and buy $10,000 worth of stock. You can't talk up the price of stocks, speculation. You can't commit fraud. You can't, it saves us because let's be honest, rules save us. The SEC still around today as well. By the way, I might ask you which question, uh, question on the test of which uh, agencies are still around today. The SEC, the FDIC is still around, and we'll get to one more that's still around. Oh, heard of this one? The Social Security Act. How many of y'all have jobs? You're paying this right now. Okay, get this one down. My voice is starting to get out. Oh, okay, reform, circle it. If you want to know FDR's legacy, it's this act. Social Security, provided retirement pensions, unemployment insurance, aid to blind, deaf, disabled, and dependent children. Here's the deal. You probably know Social Security. A lot of the times your grandma and grandpa ask them, they get a Social Security check. Every single month, it's a supplemental income for people when they reach the age of 65. Now with this, Social Security was passed in 1935. It's actually going to be a later one. But it is literally FDR's legacy, guys. If you write that out there, I, I think that's a good idea. FDR's legacy. What would happen in the Great Depression is a lot of the times the young, vibrant people would get the jobs and the older people would get nothing. This would give Social Security a net to those older people. And they literally would get a monthly check to you for the rest of your life beginning when you are 65. It literally is a safety net that literally where we take, oh, sorry, um, where we take and we kind of give credence and give honor to that whole idea that, you know, you take care of those who cannot take care of themselves. A lot of the times in older life, you cannot take care of yourself. You can't do that construction work you used to do. That's why oftentimes education is going to be a key to you guys because if you have to have a hard working job, like a job where you use your back and not your brain, you get older a lot faster. And Social Security would even say, if you are not able to work after the age of 65, we will help you. It is a social safety net. One of the most important features of the New Deal, establish a retirement for persons over, circle the age of 65, that might be a question. Sometimes they called it old age insurance, but I'll be honest with you, it was just basically to protect Americans who were unable to protect themselves, Com um, compensation to disabled as well sometimes, and widows if anyone dies. With that, 
this is going to be that idea that we are going to help those less fortunate. It's a good practice question, too, if you want to pause it and do it. By the way, if you end up doing these, you might end up knowing answers to quiz questions along the way. Okay, next up. C, C, C. Civilian Conservation Corps. Circle the word conservation. What does it mean to conserve, to save? Let me tell you about this one. This might be one of my favorite ones as well. Okay? This one, of course, is still not around today. But here's the deal. It was genius. It basically said the government will employ you to go out and do forest work. And when the government employs you to go out and do forest work, you will get paid once a month. You will get three meals a day. And you will have a job. Literally. Within four months, 1,300 CCC camps were in operation. I'm going to show you a map of where they were. 300,000 men in 1933 between the ages of 18 and 25 got a job from the CCC. They signed up for six months at $30 a month. Here's the other thing I want you to make sure you mention to yourself. It was $30 a month and three meals a day. During the Great Depression, can you get that anywhere? No. Nobody had a job. In 1933 and 1941, over three million men served in the CCC. The goal was not only to take and give them jobs, but to keep them away from the job and street and the job market. Here's the deal. These young guys right here, okay, they're going out for a job versus like a guy that's in his 40s. Who are you going to give the job to? Probably the young guys right here, yeah? Well, you take them out and they, you put them on a CCC camp and you pay them and you develop their job skills as well as improve the environment as well. We'll talk about that in just a second. Then they get off the job market, they have a job, they have food, and the older guy now gets the job in the city, which will help out him. Now, with that, they planted trees, they built public parks, they drained swamps to fight malaria. They took and they did so many different things. And remember, one of the biggest causes of the Great Depression was the Dust Bowl. They took and they built shelter belts along the way. Like, they built trees and they, they started replanting trees to keep those roots from keeping that ground from blowing away. It was a way to literally relieve these men by giving them jobs. Look at this picture. I pay you to do this. I relieve you. I give you jobs. I feed you. But then here's the nice thing. You take and you plant these trees, then you're reforming it because if those trees are there, will you have another great dust bowl? Nope. And the other thing is, is it does provide relief, recovery, reform, recovery. You now give these guys $30. What are they going to do with that $30 a month? They're going to send it home. The wife's going to pay the grocer. The grocer's going to and it starts that money all up and again. Here's a really good um, uh, propaganda poster for the CCC. Young man's opportunity to work and conserve natural resources. To live, to learn, to build. Pretty simple. Here's a literally CCC camps. Ooh, one thing I will... Mm, this would be a really good question to see if you're watching my videos. These camps, this is one thing that I don't like. They were segregated. So there was African American camps and white camps. You'll notice there's one right here, right near Amarillo. That was a Palo State Park one. Interesting. Agriculture Adjustment um, Administration. Relief for farmers. Circle it. I don't want to talk too much about these. I want to kind of respect your time a little bit. Don't want to go too far into this. Paid to limit crop and livestock production. Created limited supply. Caused prices to increase. Here's the deal. The crazy thing is, is Sounds weird that I would say FDR wants prices to increase, but here's the deal. If prices are low, farmers can't get any money. So the AAA, Agriculture Adjustment Administration, was provided entirely to help my farmers. Here's what it did. It paid you as a farmer to limit your livestock production. It paid you to destroy your supply sometimes. It paid you to slaughter all the new piglets because if you put the piglets on the market, the supply of pork goes up, the price goes down. And so it paid you to do essentially nothing because with that, the government would give you money so you wouldn't produce, so supply would stay low and prices for the other farmers could stay high. Kind of a hard concept, but it is Absolutely genius. Unfortunately, it was also, I'm going to have you write something out beside this slide, unconstitutional as well. Oops. With that, it's the government controlling the market. So we've gone from laissez-faire in the 20s to does FDR basically control everything sometimes now. 
One thing that I don't always like about the New Deal is it made the federal government get a lot bigger and sometimes people would get hurt in the meantime. One thing about the AAA is, is that it helped some, in, like the white property owners, but remember down in the South we had tenant farmers or sharecroppers? Well, if the property owner now is being paid to do nothing, the tenant farmers and the sharecroppers are out of a job because how did they provide rent? By producing. If the landowner doesn't need to produce, the tenant farmer or sharecropper is out of a job. A lot of the times they think that this agency right here was basically discriminatory because it helped the whites, hurt the blacks. Mm. Federal Housing Administration, one thing I want you to make sure you know is um, you might want to write this out beside somewhere because this is one that helped people get mortgages for houses, so just so you know.